Tobias with Fresh Holistics. I'm going to talk about energy. Now we all want an abundance of energy and vitality, so we need to ask ourselves the question, how does the body produce energy? And in relation to nutrition and lifestyle, how can we get the cells of our body to produce energy more efficiently? So I'm going to discuss two different metabolic pathways at the cell level. One is efficient and one is not so efficient. So um, hopefully we can utilize this and help us with our daily lives. So to start, we're going to start with the basic macronutrients, um, which come from obviously food consumption. So we have proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Basically after um, digestion and absorption, the body should be breaking these products down into uh, amino acids, certain monosaccharides, here we have glucose, and glycerol and fatty acids. Through certain metabolic processes, we are going to be left with the byproduct of pyruvate. Now again, this is all happening at the cell in the cytoplasm. And then um, before we touch on this, you'll see that fatty acids and to a lesser degree amino acids um, will actually also um, convert and leave us with acetyl-CoA, but I'll get to that. So once we're at pyruvate, what we have is we have a fork in the road, and at that fork in the, lo at that fork in the road, um, everything's oxygen dependent. So in the absence of oxygen, what we have is an anaerobic pathway that leads us to this lactic acid fermentation pathway. You can see that we have about two units of ATP, or units of energy, um, so the energy efficiency is not very good here. Um, now this whole pathway is necessary in certain circumstances, um, especially during exercise, like sprinting, or certain types of weightlifting. Um, but if we're in a resting state, it's not really the most conducive um, to our overall health. And if we're in a state of prolonged stress, when we're not exercising, um, it can be very inflammatory and I'll come back to that a little bit. Um, but this is, a, it is an option, but it's not the best option. So if we do have oxygen, basically what we go to is the actual pathways enter into the mitochondria of the cell, and then it goes through two basic metabolic pathways. Acetyl-CoA will go into the Krebs cycle and then into the electron transport chain, which some people are familiar with, from um, your basic physiology and biology. Um, and this will leave us to the most optimal situation, which is about 32, 34 units of energy, or ATP. Um, we'll also have the production of water and carbon dioxide. So this is definitely optimal. One thing to think about is that everything is dependent on oxygen, and for that oxygen to be utilized properly, we're going to need optimal thyroid hormone. So the active thyroid hormone T3 is going to activate the cell and activate the mitochondria which is necessary for this whole process which is called cellular respiration. So for this to happen we have to have oxygen, we have to have proper um, T3 as well. So before I continue you'll see some of the considerations is if things are dependent on T3, we need to think about what's going on with the thyroid cascade. The thyroid cascade is the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the thyroid, and then the conversion of your thyroid hormones from T3 to the more active thyroid hormone, I'm sorry, T4 to the more active thyroid hormone T3 is really happening predominantly in the liver. Um, and a lot of individuals are dealing with um, liver toxicity and backup, um, whether that's from poor foods or blood sugar handling problems, um, or I mean, it could be it could be a lot of things. But anyways, we need to we definitely need to look at the organ of the liver, and then some of that conversion is happening to a lesser extent in the gut. Um, so some thyroid considerations that we need to make sure that are happening properly, so we have enough hormones to stimulate the cells of our body, so we can get optimal energy, and that's exactly what we want. Um, moving right along. One of the things that um, you might have noticed is that the production also produces carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, interestingly, 
will actually help the red blood cells and the hemoglobin to liberate oxygen so that there is more availability of oxygen um, for consumption. So once we get this whole cascade happening, um, the actual process will produce more carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide will help produce more oxygen availability so that we can continue for more energy. So carbon dioxide is very, very beneficial. And interestingly enough, over here, carbon dioxide works inversely uh, with lactic acid or this whole pathway. So um, if we're continuously going down the lactic acid fermentation pathway, what we're going to get is we're going to get a decrease of carbon dioxide and an increase of lactic acid, which will lead to more inflammation, uh, the possibility of fibrosis, the possibility of more glycation end products in the system. So this is not what we want. Um, on the other side of it, more carbon dioxide will perpetuate the cellular respiration. It will also help to stabilize certain cells, systems, and organs within the body. It acts as an antioxidant. Um, so carbon dioxide, even though it's thought of as a waste product, it's actually highly beneficial to the body. So what we want is we want to go this direction toward cellular respiration for optimal energy. And if we're looking at it, there's actually four basic things that are needed for optimal energy. So we have to think about we need to optimize oxygen so that we can go down this pathway. We need active thyroid hormone T3. You need the production of carbon dioxide. And then you need the health of the mitochondria to actually produce this energy. So those are the four things, oxygen, T3, carbon dioxide, and the health of the mitochondria. Uh, over here, finally, I just want to mention, um, as I mentioned before, it's any type of prolonged stress is really going to encourage the body to go down the wrong pathway. Um, now, this could be happening because of blood sugar handling problems. It could be happening because of um, radical diets, like extended periods of low-carbohydrate dieting, um, problems with the liver, um, which kind of goes back to blood sugar handling problems and other issues. Um, so stress management is something that we need to consider, whether it's from a nutritional perspective or from a lifestyle perspective. Uh, and then finally, polyunsaturated fats uh, will disrupt the mitochondria. They disrupt thyroid production. So they're disrupting several things that are necessary for optimal energy um, production. So we really need to think about um, any type of oil that is really coming from you know, your nuts, um, certain vegetables, your seeds, um, these things. Um, the polyunsaturated fats we want to eliminate and that will help this whole process. Now obviously there's a lot of other nutritional issues that we want to look at. Um, if you want more information based on the thyroid, you can check out my other videos on the thyroid cascade um, and others. Uh, I also have a mini ebook on my web on the website uh, freshholistics.com. The, the ebook's called The Starter's Guide to Mastering Your Metabolism, so check that out. Um, so anyways, hope you guys learned something. That was it. Um, if you want to optimize energy um, and live more vibrantly, that's exactly what we should be doing. We need to look at things a little bit deeper. So anyways, until next time, keep it fresh.